In this video, we're going to be talking about the Immaculate Conception of Mary and how Mary was a virgin from the beginning of her life until the end of her life. And Jesus did not have other brothers and sisters. Now, many people, like many Protestant religions, think that he did have brothers and sisters. Even Jehovah's Witnesses, it's common in their literature to say that Jesus had other brothers and sisters and Mary had up to six other children. And so many other religions think that Jesus had other brothers and sisters, but he didn't. And the traditional belief and teaching of Christianity back to the first century was that Jesus did not have other siblings, and Mary was ever virgin. And so in this video, we're going to be showing that Mary was ever virgin, and we're going to be talking about it from the Bible, and we're going to go on to answer some of the common questions and misconceptions that other people have. They bring up certain Bible quotes, and so we're going to answer those in this video right after this. My name is Brian Mercier, and if you haven't been here before, this is Catholic Truth, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping Catholics to know, love, and live their Catholic faith, and even to be able to defend it. And not just Catholics, but Protestants, Jehovah's Witnesses, atheists, anyone at any time from anywhere can come here to know exactly what the Catholic Church teaches and how it can transform your life. So if you ever have questions on Catholicism, it's right here. And before we begin, someone uh, recently was shocked that we had a Patreon page. And so they told us to tell people to let them know. And so we're letting you know that we have a Patreon page and a PayPal page as well if you would like to support our ministry. Uh, you can see it in the show description notes below. You can give monthly, yearly, or even a one-time donation, but you help save souls and change lives. We don't have this ministry without you, so please consider supporting us. All God's choices are perfect, and God's perfect choice to bring salvation into this world was through Mary. Mary was God's chosen vessel to bring the Christ child into this world. She was chosen to be the mother of the Messiah, the son of the eternal God. I mean, imagine that just for one second, that you have God as your son. Like, wow, like, doesn't even comprehend. Like, the eternal second person of the Trinity, the one who made everything that is, is going to be your son. Wow. I mean, talk about an honor. And we'll talk about that in a different video. But this was Mary's chosen role. She wasn't chosen to have a normal family and go on to have other kids like everyone else. She was chosen to prepare Jesus for his earthly ministry and to raise him and bring him up in the faith. In the Da Vinci Code, it says that it would be virtually unheard of for a Jewish family not to have other children or to just be virgins in their marriage. Now, notice what the Da Vinci Code said. It would be virtually, that's the word most people overlook, virtually impossible that they wouldn't have other kids. Virtually unheard of. Yes, virtually, but not impossible and not unheard of because there were Jewish families that had vows of virginity. They took vows of virginity, especially in the Essene community, which was one of the four Jewish communities out there, the Zealous, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Essenes. The Essenes were the most spiritual one of all, and they were the ones who sometimes took vows of virginity, even in marriage. And Mary, they believe, belonged to the Essene community and has been believed since the beginning of Christianity that she had taken a vow of virginity to God. And this is what all the earliest Christians believed. I mean, Almost unanimously, they believed that Mary was a virgin, except for one person, which we'll talk about in a minute. But that's why Mary gave such an odd answer to the angel in Luke one twenty eight when he told her that you're going to be the mother of the Son of God. And she answered, well, how can that be? I do not know a man. You know, uh, really? You don't know a man, Mary? I mean, can you imagine the angel saying that? I mean, did Mary not know about the birds and the bees? Did she not know uh, how to have sex or how to be married or how children are made? I mean, she was engaged to Joseph. She knew how this worked. She was instructed. I mean, she's not dumb. She knew it, but she had taken a vow of virginity. So she wasn't asking how to have sex and, I mean, how is this going to work? And no, of course not. She was engaged to Joseph, but she had taken a vow of virginity. So when the angel told her that she was going to have a baby, she was like, well, how is that to be since I don't know a man? You know, and 
well, she was going to know one in a few months, so, but the reality is she had taken that lifelong vow. And that's why the angel went on to tell her that you're going to be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, and it will be God himself who gives you that child. And again, before we get into objections, uh, Protestant objections, Jehovah's Witness objections from the Bible and, you know, misconceptions that people have, questions that people have, I just want to state again that this was the unanimous teaching of all Christians down through Christianity. Tertullian in the 200s believed that Jesus had other brothers and sisters, but he did not believe that they were Mary's children. He believed that they belonged to Joseph in a previous marriage. That's what he said. The only one who really doubted the perpetual virginity of Mary came in the year 380. And this was one man in all of Christianity in 400 years who was like, oh no, I think she had other kids. And everybody jumped on this person. And St. Jerome, who was probably one of the greatest scholars in the history of the church, he said this, quote, I assert that which was already proven from the gospel, that he spoke of the brethren of the Lord, not as being sons of Mary, but brethren in the sense that I have explained. That is to say, brethren in point of kinship and not by nature. And that's in 383 AD. Now, that was it. I mean, nobody ever mentioned it again, as far as I know, until after the Protestant Reformation. I mean, even all the Protestant reformers believed that Mary was ever virgin. I mean, Martin Luther believed that Mary was virgin. Calvin, Zwingli, Knox, uh, the Wesley brothers, King Henry VIII, they all believed that Mary was an ever virgin. They didn't believe that Jesus had other brothers and sisters. Listen to what Martin Luther has to say himself, if you don't believe me. Luther said Christ was the only son of Mary, and the Virgin Mary bore no other children besides him. So what Catholics teach today is what Christians have always taught down through the ages. And what Protestants and Jehovah's Witnesses teach today is really new and novel and didn't even come about until recent times. I mean, it's not what Christianity believes, but yet they're so fierce that they believe it because in English it says Jesus had other brothers and sisters, and they only read the Bible in English, but that's not the way that Christians have translated it down through the centuries. Here's what I mean. For example, the word brother in Hebrew is ah, and in Greek, it is Adelphos. This is the word for brother, but yet this word for brother also has connotations for many other family relations. I mean, it could be uncle or cousin or nephew or ne nearest kinsman, best friend. It could mean a wide variety of meanings. They often use the word brother for everything. So people who say, yes, it's only a blood brother have no idea of what these words mean or Jewish culture and what they meant by it. So they could use the word brother for pretty much almost anything. And even words that they did have other words for, like cousin. There is a Greek word for cousin, etc. But they still use the word brother oftentimes for this. And we'll see this in scripture in a second. I even had a friend named Sharon, and she was incredibly anti-Catholic. She was brought up to believe that the Catholic Church was from the devil and all of that. And she didn't believe all of this hocus pocus, even though she was thinking about becoming Catholic. But when Catholics told her these things, she was like, that's just Catholic garbage. So she herself went to a Jewish rabbi and asked him this question, you know, and she's like, do you use brother really for cousins and uncles and everyone else in your family? Do you just use the word brother for them all? And the Jewish rabbi was like, actually, yes, we do. And he's like, it's not a big deal in Jewish culture. We call everyone brother. And uh, so she was like, okay, I believe it. You know, Catholics aren't just making that up. And we can even see this in the Bible as well. Let's look at the Bible real quick. In Genesis 13, 8 and 14, 14, it says that Lot and Abraham were brothers. But if you look elsewhere, you will see that they were actually different family relations. Lot was his nephew. So they weren't actually brothers, but they were called brothers multiple times. But in reality, Lot was Abraham's nephew. So just because you read the word brother or sister in English, it does not mean that it's actual blood relations. It doesn't mean that at all. And we can't assume that. And even many Protestant scholars know this. And they say we can't know from the Bible alone because there's just not enough information based on the Greek and the Hebrew and, you know, the family relations. We don't know that it's actual blood brothers or not. There's not enough information. So we just have to, you know, stay off of that topic. So even a lot of Protestant scholars understand this. 
but this can be sorted out by looking at the rest of the Bible as well. If you look at all four crucifixion scenes in the Bible, and you read all of them and compare all of them, and you read the resurrection and even the road to Emmaus in Luke 24, you're going to notice a few things. Number one, you're going to notice that Mary the mother of Jesus, was not the only Mary at the cross. There were several Marys at the cross, and there were even other Marys outside these Marys, so there were a lot of Marys. Now, four of the brothers of Jesus are mentioned by name in the Bible, and by brothers of Jesus, I mean brothers of Jesus. They're mentioned in the Bible. But when you compare the four Gospels and the resurrection and the crucifixion and the road to Emmaus, you realize that three of these brothers are actually the sons of other Marys and not the Blessed Virgin Mary. So right there, we have proof that these, quote, brothers of Jesus are not actual blood brothers of Jesus, but belong to other Marys. Not to mention that it's Jewish custom that if you were to die, you would give your mother away to your family, to your other brothers and sisters. But since Jesus didn't have any other brothers and sisters, who did he give it to? Saint John. He gave his mother away to John the Apostle, not his other brothers and sisters. And if he had other brothers and sisters, this would have been the biggest scandal. It would have been a huge insult to his family not to do that. But he didn't because he didn't actually have brothers and sisters. Many people will immediately object and say, listen, Jesus was the firstborn, and since he was the firstborn, that means he had other brothers and sisters because they were second and third and fourthborn and so on, but he was the firstborn showing that he had other brothers and sisters. But that's not actually what firstborn means. Firstborn is not you're the firstborn person. Firstborn is actually a title. In Exodus 20, it says that the firstborn male that opens the womb has to be consecrated to God. Now, this was independent whether you had other children or not. I mean, could you imagine a Jewish family who had a boy and they're supposed to consecrate them to God and they say, oh, no, 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 we got to wait to see if we have two or three other children. And then, okay, then he'll be the firstborn and we can go consecrate him. No, I mean, of course, I'm being silly here, but the reality is that whether someone had brothers and sisters or whether they are an only child, they were called the firstborn born. So firstborn does not denote the fact that there were other brothers and sisters necessarily, because even only children were called the firstborn. And it was a title that not only consecrated you to God, but gave you certain blessings and inheritances that even if you had other children, they're not going to receive it. So title firstborn, it's a title. It doesn't mean necessarily that Mary had other children. Another common argument is from Matthew 1.25, where it says that Joseph knew her not until she brought forth her son. So Joseph didn't know her until she brought forth a son. So Protestants and Jehovah's Witnesses will say, see, they, she was only a virgin until that time. And she didn't know him, meaning have sex with him until that time, but afterwards they did, even though the Bible doesn't actually say that they did afterwards. And the word in the Bible, until, does not always mean afterwards, and in many times it doesn't mean afterwards at all. It only means up unto a certain point, and it doesn't, it's not concerned with what happens after, it's just trying to prove what happened before. And this is exactly what Matthew did. I mean, why did Matthew put that in there? To show that Mary had other children? Of course not. What Matthew was trying to prove was that Mary was a virgin to prove the prophecy of Isaiah, which says that Jesus would be born of a virgin. So Matthew keeps trying to prove that Mary was actually a virgin when she had Jesus to fulfill the prophecy. And she did not know Joseph until they had Jesus. So up until the point when Jesus was born, she had no sex with Joseph, meaning Jesus came in a supernatural way and wasn't conceived the normal way. That is exactly what Matthew is trying to teach us. That's exactly what Matthew's point is trying to make. She was a virgin and had no sex with Joseph. That was his point. Now, of course, uh, Protestants will still insist and say, no, it means afterwards. It always means afterwards. But it it doesn't, because there are many other passages in the Bible, many that we don't even have time to get to, that show that until is only talking up into a certain point, to make a point. I'll give you a couple examples. 2 Samuel 6.23 says that Saul's daughter did not have any children until the day of her 
death. Now, did she go on and have children after she died? <laughs> of course not. They were only trying to say something up to a certain point, not what happens afterwards. In Genesis 8-7, it says that the dove of Noah did not return until after all the war waters receded, but of course we know that the dove didn't return at all, so it, something didn't happen afterwards, even though they used the word until. 1 Corinthians 15.25 says that Jesus will reign until all of his enemies are made his footstool. Will he not reign after his enemies are subjected to him? Is he not the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Is he not going to reign forever and ever? Of course he is. But it says until. He's not going to reign after that. Jesus is going to reign forever because he's God. And Jesus is Lord. So the point is that it, even though it uses the word until, it doesn't mean afterwards like we do in English. It doesn't always work that way in the Bible. So saying that Mary absolutely had sexual relations with Joseph, just because it says until in English, but that's not what it means in the Bible, doesn't prove that Mary had other children. There's no proof anywhere that Mary had other children unless you read it in English and you take it all out of context and you remove it from the unanimous context of all of church history until recent times. So again, was it odd that Mary remained a virgin? Perhaps, but not half as odd as having the Son of God as your own son. Not a normal family. Not a normal circumstance. Why do people have to force them into a normal circumstance? Perhaps just because of their anti-Catholic biases and they really want to make Mary something that the Catholic Church says that she's not. But the reality is Mary wasn't ever a virgin. She gave her life to God. She gave a vow of virginity. And all Christians believe this down through the ages. Go look up the Christians for the first 500 years of Christianity and they all believe that Mary did not have other children. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope it helped to inspire your faith, teach you in your faith, and clarify many questions that you may have had about this topic. And maybe you're not Catholic and you would like to know what the Catholic Church believes, and we really hope that this helped to clarify exactly what the Catholic Church teaches and why, and hope to help you see that, you know, our beliefs do come from the Bible and history, and that we're not just making them up out of the blue. <laughs> you know, we really do have some reasons for believing what we do, including all the Christians down through the ages. But, Here's the thing. If you like this video, we would love for you to help share it and get the word out there so other people can be informed and other people can have their questions answered. And so please give this video a like and also comment down below and share it on your social media platforms. We would love that. And if you could help us reach so many more people, Patreon, PayPal down below. Please support our ministry. $10 a month, $25 a month. We even have patrons who are giving $50 and $100 a month and $150 a month because they believe in our work and they know that this work world needs Catholic truth, and this world is desperate for the truth. So if you could be generous and support our ministry, we would love that. And if you would like daily inspiration, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram. You can check out our Pinterest, and all of that is down below. Thank you so much. Please keep me in your prayers. Please keep our whole organization in your prayers and all the work that we do. We are always praying for you. God bless you.